Hey, welcome to UTM TV. Today we're talking about five things that you need to know. We're going to go over some news articles, share a few thoughts, and just some interesting things. Whether you're a Disney fan, Universal fan, or you're going to the park soon, these are some things that we found that you need to know. Number one, welcome to the podcast, everybody. First of all, thank you so much for hanging out with us here. Number one, Tron previews have begun. And it is opening April 4th, but the previews for cast members have begun. And there's been some good reviews, but also some mixed reviews. Yeah. So some videos are floating out there, a little bit of the preview. That's daring, carrying your phone onto this and trying to take video. I don't know if I could do that. It is pretty interesting that they're allowing phones. And this is one of those attractions that makes you put your stuff in your locker. But for some reason, they're allowing people to take their phones, which is unusual because there's been a couple interesting, especially on overseas parks where they've banned recording on attractions. Well, I don't think that necessarily they're allowing you to record, but they yeah, are. Yeah, but that's like, a you know what, when you allow someone to bring their phone, you're, it's like a wink wink. <laughs> it's it's definitely kind of hard probably to manage. So I'm sure people turn an, turn an eye and hey, if you lose your phone, it's on you, right? I do like that they give cast members a preview first. Even yeah. before, I know that you know, annual pass members and DVC members are important. But I like the fact that cast members get to go on it first. I agree. It gives them that excitement and that little incentive of how all the hard work that they do. But I'm sure it's also in a way for Disney parks to be able to have someone. It's kind of like when you're you're at a restaurant and you're explaining the dish to someone, right? So you want the you yeah. want them to really enjoy it. You really want them to have experienced it so that you can get them pumped as well. So Unless it stinks and then they're Unless like, you know what? It's probably not worth your wait. You should yeah. probably skip this one. It's a long line. I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, that's true. Right? Like if you're a re- if you're a, if you're a, a a wait part of the wait staff at a restaurant and you eat that meal and it stinks, how do you suggest it to somebody? That's true. I don't know, but they seem to have fun. I do know that the the only negative I would say about this ride is that we've talked about this before, but it's not necessarily the longest one. And and I think that can be kind of a bummer if you're waiting for a long time virtually or wherever. You just want a ride, right? So if it's a short ride, it's not necessarily the best. You know what it you know what this has against it is that it took so long to get <laughs> yeah. started in, yeah. in open that people are thinking about that in what the expectations should be for it versus what they actually are. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's a video here on the channel. I don't know if you can hear this. But you can see them flying through the air like that over. That looks really cool. I mean, it looks super cool. It definitely takes on a whole nother level at night. Yeah. For sure. So I know that people are going to really want to try to ride this at night. This is this party was cool. It was a DJ dance party and they got to ride, so Man, I never wanted to be a cast member till now. Right? <laughs> it's like awesome. All right, next next thing up on the deck today is Toy Story 5 has been announced. What are your thoughts on Toy Story 5? I know Toy Story 4 had really good reviews. Uh, so I'm assuming they're going to do a good job with Toy Story 5. But it seems like they're coming out with some a lot of sequels and remakes. Yeah, I'm ready for something new and fresh. But then again, having a classic out there, it's kind of like there is probably more story to be told and to me it's kind of one of those things where it's it was it's always been a good story so to me it probably makes sense for the company to continue it yeah they've always done a good job telling that story you know what it has uh, as an advantage obviously it's animated right and they're toys and you can always pass those toys on to your kids or somebody else you know that can enjoy them so they have that as an advantage for storytelling versus if it was a live action film where people just get older, like to- toys don't age. That's true. So you can just pass those toys on to younger kids. You don't have to worry about the toys getting older and how do you make them look different and how do you make them age over time? Well, I mean, None of that do, happens. things happen to toys. Eventually they get scuffed or whatever, but I agree. You yeah, know, there's no true. like getting older. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. It's like animals get older. People get older. You have to take that into consideration. But for this... It's just, if they want to pass the story on, they say, you know what? Let's just give these toys to some new kids. Let's continue it. Right? I let's, mean, it is fun. Let's though. add a S S to the bottom of <laughs> a Woody shoe, and it says Sandy now. <laughs> I like how there's a representation of Toy Story in the park, so it still makes sense to continue the Definitely. story. You have Toy Story Mania, which is a lot of guests' favorite rides. Our kids love that ride and attraction. Of course, now in Hollywood Studios, you have Toy Story Land, 
which to me, they could do more with it, but it's nice to see that it's there. Yeah, they should have, they should have, I hope they have still have space. You never know. Maybe they'll do some expansion, especially Maybe. with Toy Story 5 coming out. And there's more to that story that they're going to tell. Maybe in the future, there'll be something that they can add to that to kind of tie it into the new movie. Yeah. Speaking of Disney Plus, so the reason that all of this news comes out with Tron opening Toy Story 5 being announced is that Disney released their earnings call. And Bob Iger, it was his first earnings call being back as CEO. What is an earning? Like, what does it even mean? So an earnings call basically means he comes on as the CEO and says, hey, listen, this is what the company is looking at currently this okay. is what they're doing moving forward and they just basically give you an update of how the company looks financially for investors got it okay, okay. so investors look at those earnings calls they they say all right how much revenue did you make did you make or lose money blah 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 what yeah. are you doing for the future so they can see if they if disney is a company that people want to invest in or not okay so bob Iger came on and said hey look at this is what happened in the past this is what we're looking to focus on in the future. And they said Disney streaming is something that they're really, really looking to hone in on and focus on moving forward. Uh, they also announced they're laying off a lot of people, but Disney streaming, the subscriber growth wasn't as high as they wanted it to be, but it wasn't as bad as they thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. But they did say that Disney Plus is something that they're really focusing on. And I just have some thoughts. I thought that what... In my opinion, Disney Plus is great, but there's so many subscription services now, it's almost like death by subscription. Everything offers something just enough to make you want to subscribe, right? It's like you cut the you cut the cord for cable, but now you have Hulu, you have Disney Plus, you have yeah. Amazon Prime, you have Netflix. And they all are trying to compete for your eyeballs. And the th the one thing that Disney does have the potential to do well but doesn't he is, said compete with eyeballs. I don't know why that was. Okay, go ahead. They don't, like their series of, uh, their original attraction series, right? Behind the attractions or um, the one about the prop culture. Like I like shows like that. And Disney has a great history and a great storytelling team that they could produce so much more of that versus trying to compete with Netflix who has series like Stranger Things. Yeah, but it's that creativity part that they need. Like you owe, you can go back into history so much, right? And some of it can be a little boring and they don't necessarily have, yes, for the true Disney fans, some of those shows are really great and fun to watch, but they can be a little boring. They so, should team up with creators. Yeah. Because I think creators who are independent thinkers create better style of content that people want to watch because they know what's trending in nowadays. Mm -hmm. And then they need to team them up with Disney who has the capabilities to create better content, not necessarily the actual content of someone talking, but Disney has the capability with the tools and the technology to make it happen. Yet they're releasing Toy Story 5. So they're kind of going backwards and saying, well, this worked. It's surely going to work in the future. But I'm talking specifically for Disney Plus. Okay. You know, because Disney Plus is a platform that, you but, can experiment on. Yeah, Toy but, Story 5 yeah, has got to be a movie that's going to make, it's got to be good because it's got to make a lot of money because it have high true. paying actors yeah. who and they have big expenses. Disney Plus is an, an, you can experiment with. You can do these one, one off series with somebody about something that you couldn't necessarily do for a high cost movie. I guess that's where I was confused too because a lot of times I just think of Disney Plus as my outlet for watching those movies that I didn't get a chance to see in the theater that I will at home. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. And I think they should use that. If they really want to grow subscribers on there, they should use that as an opportunity to do experiment, almost like their own YouTube channel. Yeah. Like they should bring creators on to create content like they would on YouTube, but for Disney plus really the sky's the limit. Yeah. If they just opened up that portal and think outside the box a little bit. Is that what the plans are? I know they're building something new in New York, like a new building where they're trying to house some studios it doesn't really look that big and i know that a lot of the studios you need space in new york is not that i haven't read about that but i did someone in our club utm did share an article because they were saying you know what i hope they bring tv shows back to new york so maybe that's kind of also their thinking is that they 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 understand the task ahead and they understand and they know they can do it but it's just like all right how do we how do we get there they just need to make it not so buttoned up though yeah, well, it's, I think that's... You don't have to be controversial, but you can be a little bit more relaxed. Yeah, 
Right. I don't know. But I'm excited. I think that with all these platforms, the one thing you can say is that they do push each other, right? It pushes each company to produce more content, push the envelope, give us the shows that we love. And, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, uh, listen, the competition is great. Without yeah. competition, it's the reason why Disney probably opened Tron and added Toy Story Land mm -hmm. is because of the competition with Universal. Sure. I in mean, the parks around. themselves. Yeah. So to me, I'm excited for what's yet to come. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully they listen to me. If it's, you need some help, reach out. Yeah. We'll help you out. Yeah. Next thing, Avatar. Now, obviously they just released Avatar Way of the Water. There's a new Avatar experience coming to Disneyland. And we actually talked about this on last week's Five Things You Need to Know. Mm -hmm. We said, you know what? There was a drone show in Disneyland Paris that they announced. And we said, you know what? Do you want to see them copy things and bring them to parks over here. Do, would you want to see that drone show in the United States? And a lot of people said yes and no. Like they don't want copies of things in other parks because that's what makes them go to that park. I think what I got from the takeaway for me was that we'll allow it if it's that epic. Yeah, if it's great, right? <laughs> if it's like blow your mind, amazing technology, sure, you can copy it. But, but other if it's not if it's just another ride or something else like you can experience then we want a separate kind of feeling in different areas so he said on the call Who's he's he? called bob Iger. Okay. sorry so bob Iger on the earnings call said an avatar experience and said details will be coming soon not providing any however in remarks during disney's uh, earnings call so we didn't necessarily say what it was he just said there was an avatar experience coming hmm. so That'll be interesting to see what it is and where it is. It makes sense because they do have the Avatar franchise. The new movie just came out, and there's a couple more planned. So that's something that's going to be happening with the Disney parks for a long time to come. That being said, first of all, what kind of Avatar experience could it be if it wasn't an attraction? Please don't bring Rivers of Journey, the Navi River Journey to Disneyland. <laughs> Nobody wants that. We barely want it in Disney World. Yeah. That's a flight true. of passage would be cool, or an, or something similar to flight of passage. That would be interesting. Yeah, where where would they even have the space to do this? I don't even know. Like, I, I don't. My only guess would be there has got to be some land that they did, maybe near the park, or they would do something with a, an existing land that they have and redo it. Mm -hmm. I think that they should be careful about announcing things unless it's epic. <laughs> like I almost think that at, at this point. Everyone is, our senses are so overloaded and like our expectations are so high. I almost wish they would just not say anything and just like all of a sudden it's there. And like, well, that's what happened with Tron, right? Like yeah. Tron, they announced it took so long to make. People were anticipating it for so long. The expectations are so high for that now that they can't even, there's no way Disney could meet what fans' expectations are for it. With anything. Like I just wish they just would just stay a little so bit So usually just say three years from now. They should just open the Avatar experience and be like, look it, it's open. There you go. Keep it secret. Yeah. It's under secrecy. What are they building over there? What are they kind of like, you know what? That's how they opened the Haunted Mansion in Disneyland way back in the day. They didn't necessarily know what was going to be in the Haunted Mansion. And they I just like people that. yeah, people just saw our building over there mm -hmm. and they didn't re really know what it was. I mean the the uh cast members didn't even really know what it was. They just said knew well, something was coming. To be fair. Imagineers didn't even really know what it was going right. to be. <laughs> they were working on it for so, I mean, the directions it was going to, took them around and around for a while. But I just because you can't help it, right? You can't help with expectations and then it takes so long. And nowadays, I think us, is, like us, just in general, like we're just so used to having things instantaneously that it, it there's not that magic that used to happen before. So I, I almost want that and I crave that, not just, you know. Just a surprise. Just a surprise. Speaking of surprises, it's yeah. movie night yes. on Club UTM. So oh, if you want right. to check out Club UTM, it's our private community, clubutm.co. The one and only. Don't fall for any similar similar ones. We're the one and only. <laughs> no imposters. No imposters. Clubutm.co. Join us inside the club. Get access to the private Facebook group, some extra podcast episodes and movie nights and just fun things inside the club. Clubutm.co. Finally on the agenda today. This one... I don't know. I hope everyone's excited as much as, much as I am on this, but I this one I've been waiting, waiting for. See, I'm mad about this one. Okay. D uh, Disney housekeeping update you've been waiting for. No kidding. <laughs> We've been waiting for it. Talk about not wanting to really announce any. Like, this should be, should have. Uh, this yeah. doesn't need to be an announcement. <laughs> this should be an apology. Yeah, it should have. Sorry for charging you all that money to stay at our resorts and only giving you housekeeping every other day. 
if that. <laughs> or when you need it. Like yeah. this, when you're staying at a Disney resort, this is unacceptable to me. You need to have the option to get housekeeping every single day. And it should be your choice if you don't want it. For sure. I mean, I think that I can't imagine. I actually don't even know. Like to me, going on vacation and just coming back to a clean room after a long day at the park. Maybe it's because we are a family of five and our room gets so messy so quickly. It, to me, it just didn't feel the same. Like the room itself didn't feel, I'm going to say it did not feel as magical when you come back. A mess. It's a mess. And you're just kind of like feeling a mess because you were at the park all day and you know how it is. You just want to rest. I think if they gave people the option to not do it, because sometimes we're in the room and it's a, you know, maybe it's not the nicest day outside and it's like, you know what? It's not a park day. We're just okay. going to hang out in the room and we'll just put the sign on there. We don't need it today. Yeah. This should be an apology, not an announcement. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're yeah. back, though. We apologize. Or they should have given you a credit or something for not having that. Because when you stay at a Disney resort, this is the type of experience you expect. Well, and it's also similar to what they do on cruise ships. Like, sometimes you might see a magical touch. Not always, but sometimes you'll come back and... Your, I remember the kids, like some of their favorite stuffed animals were, were done in a way where they like they were all dolled up. Yeah, well, or the extras you get on a cruise ship, like the yeah. free food or the free, uh, not free, it's part of your payment. No, but what I'm saying is like that is what made the going back to the room at night, like no matter how tired you were or whatever. Well, that's what separates Disney Cruise from a Carnival Cruise, right? Yeah. That experience. And this is why you stay at a Disney resort versus staying off property. Right. Which is what people were talking about. They were saying, why is it worth staying on Disney property now? Well, I think it's still worth staying on property. I w this was just like a bummer to me. Like it wasn't something that would deter me completely. I didn't, but I definitely, I guess, longed for that feeling again. It made you, it made you think about it versus now that it's back. It's like, all right, I'm not even going to think about it now. Yeah. You know, well, you appreciate it when it's bad. Yeah, Maybe for we sure. needed it gone, but it should apply. I I wish it would apply to all rooms. Right now, it's not, and I, I'm. That's another part that I'm really waiting for is that it'll just go across the board and and be a thing for everyone. All I care is that if it applies to my room. <laughs> that's it. Okay. I don't care. It's not to be every room, just mine. You could tell he's like something happens to me, and I just have to like take a minute to just clean up the room and it actually ends up stressing the whole family out instead of like, and everybody does chip in and does a great job of that. But like, it's amazing how it. fast a get room angry. gets messy. Yeah. When people are on vacation, you get five of us in a hotel room and within two hours, you look around and you say, how did five people possibly make this room look so messy? Yeah. And it's not dirty it's just you gotta unpack all your clothes you gotta change maybe someone takes a shower and there's towels on the, it's just how did it happen so quickly yeah so well, I'm, I'm appreciating I'm, this i am really too i am really appreciating that this is back and hopefully it never goes away again <laughs> all right let us know what you think in the comments below or message us on our website unlockingthemagic.com you should check out unlocking the magic travel as well and uh hopefully you like this episode five things you need to know we'll be doing this every week as long as there's information to talk about, we'll be doing this podcast here. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. It's a podcast?